All right, so here we are. We're back today with another fine EV drop, and it is April, and we're not even getting to the Shanghai Auto Show yet, which is going to absolutely blow up TechPath, so make sure and stay tuned right here. By the way, my name is Paul Barron, and welcome back to TechPath. We're going to jump into a new vehicle that is called Zeker. And this is the Zeker 001 that we're going to be reviewing today. Kind of talking a little about the drop of what they're doing for you guys that maybe are not aware of this brand. Basically, this is a Chinese parent company of Volvo that has launched this. Essentially, they announced that they were launching a new electric mobility technology and solutions company called Zeker. The company, which is China's largest private automaker, is reportedly going to invest basically $300 million into the new venture. I still think that's a little low. But 300 million, that's still a good move. Um, I'm just, I'm, I don't know, I don't, I don't get that. Maybe, I mean, it's China, come on. This is the biggest market out there. Um, but anyway, it is gonna be a string of deals for uh, Geely that's gonna introduce satellites, drones, trucking, all kinds of different things. Uh, they've got uh, deals with Baidu, Tencent, all the, and Foxconn, which of course makes the iPhone. This is gonna be interesting to see these kind of companies kind of creating brands on the fly. The first cars bearing the Zeker nameplates are scheduled to roll out in the third quarter of this year. So we'll actually see this uh, little bad boy this year. So that's going to be fun. The other thing is that uh, they recently kind of said, hey, let's do a, a launch on this new brand in response to what was an increase in demand for EVs in China and other markets around the world. Obviously, China being the number one. Their CEO is uh, hes an interesting guy. Did a little bit of research on this guy, Daniel Li Dongwei, I believe, uh, chief executive officer of Geely, uh, is basically going out and putting a lot of investment and I think a lot of brain power behind what they're trying to do. So Zeker is going to join Volvo, which is in the process of transitioning to EV only, company by 2030, one of the more advanced. Polestar, which just began delivering its dual motor 233 mile range Polestar 2 in Europe, also and the US, and then Lincoln Co., which is a focused on vehicle sharing rather than ownership. So this is a hot category within China, and I think this is going to be fun uh, to see some of these vehicles start to roll out. Zeker, the new pure electric premium brand from Geely Holding. Um, as I said, this is really going after kind of this massive growth in uh, China in terms of uh, really going after the demand of this. Here's the question I have with a vehicle like this is, are you going up against the giant killer, which is the Tesla Model 3? So if they are going against Tesla on this, uh, it's going to be interesting to see because this is, uh, first of all, I think the design, this is a very sexy looking vehicle. Um, not going to give it a rating yet because I just need to see more of it, but the fact that it does have the look and feel of a very high premium EV, this definitely could be a uh, you know a potential to those Tesla Model 3 owners or buyers that are there in China. Um, it offers basically 435 mile range, which is absolutely over the top. This is a big plus. They're also going to build and own their own high-speed Zeker charging network across China. I just like saying Zeker. Zeker charging network. Zeker. I mean, that, that, that just sounds so cool. I like, I want a Zeker charging network here in the United States. So anyway, we'll get back to it. They're going to offer high-speed charging facilities of up to 360 kilowatts. Among the fastest offered today, so that's a big plus, and they aim to build 2,200 charging stations with over 20,000 charging facilities by the end of the year, uh, or excuse me, by the end of 2023. That's a big number. That Even in China, that's a big number. So I think that in, um, in the fact that they are building a brand kind of from scratch, scratch but also uh, at the same time building it alongside other brands that are, are super well-known, this could get some play in terms of the Chinese population uh, and consumers really going after this one for sure. Interesting, we'll see how that kind of plays out. Let's talk about size though. Luggage space, 2,144 liters, one of its biggest in its class. Air suspension, which I wish the Model Y had. Um, Elon, you gotta be listening to this. The Model Y needs air suspension that automatically adjusts for ground clearance from 117 millimeters to 205 millimeters based on your user requirements. That's pretty cool. I do like the automatic that, uh, um, doors that detect passengers approach. That's basically a Model S feature. 
Um, you know, you kind of have to reference back all these design cues because there is a certain set of design styling cues that are coming over from, of course, Tesla that many manufacturers are doing. And we are seeing some new innovations that Tesla does not have. And these companies are actually outpacing Tesla in some of their feature sets. Some of them a little crazy. Some of them, I think, definitely uh, pretty interesting. Okay, so this one I love. Automatically detecting an, appro an approaching user via facial recognition and basically automatically adjusting the car to their personal preferences. So that's kind of cool. Uh, full lifetime over-the-air updates. First company I've really seen that has said, we're gonna do a lot of over-the-air updates that's a good thing. I want to see this happen. Uh, updates are coming at least once per quarter, keeping the car ownership very highly competitive. That's a big deal. Top speed of this is 124 miles an hour, so it's definitely respectable in the class. Here's the big one, zero to 62, 3.8 seconds. That's in line with what's happening over in the other camps in terms of high speed, uh, great uh, passenger vehicles and uh, definitely within these kinds of ranges. Uh, so good value, good range, great design, great charging network. I think we have a player here coming up of the ranks. So this is gonna be fun to watch this this particular one. So Neil, you better watch out. And Xping, you got, you got a new, uh, there's a new sheriff in town. Hey, the braking is really good on this car. It goes from like 60 to zero in about 34 meters. So that's a big one. Maximum output of 400 kilowatts, which will create uh, basically a very high torque in an instant need. So that's a good one. Very similar to the way you're driving some of your EVs out there today. Two battery packs will be offered in this, uh, basically an 86 kilowatt hour pack and a 100 kilowatt an hour pack. So good options there on the battery. I'd love to learn more about the battery tech. We'll see how that goes. Online and off sales will become the backbone of Zeker's sales channels. I like the online. The offline, I don't get that with why not, this should just be an online product, especially with being a new launch, you get the chance. Sure, just do a Lucid model where you have the showrooms, it's all purchased online, I just, I don't get that. Gotta, gotta go in that direction. And this just seems so forward thinking. In 2021 alone, Zeker plans to open two flag flagship Zeker Experience Centers with 60 smaller Zeker spaces. I'm assuming these are gonna be like little, you know, come check out the tech, maybe we have a car here type thing uh, that will be opening in these high density uh, shopping malls and locations across China. So they're going really all in on trying to get into the market. Uh, they are going to also have uh, these locations, uh, basically 36 delivery centers and 60 different service centers to help kind of support this. So that's gonna be cool. App will also offer ordering of the vehicles and interaction with other Zeker users. I wanna see that. What could that be? Uh, that's something that I wish more EV makers would do is, is help kind of create that environment. We've talked to the Tesla Lab people here and they do it in their app, but in the Tesla, you don't have that ability. And so what you end up doing is jumping on these Facebook groups, um, you know, like, you know, the one we have down here in South Florida, to kind of get involved with other users and learn how they're maximizing the use of the vehicle. I think this is a good idea. So definitely a cool one to stay. Uh, in addition to sales channels, Zika will also offer a vehicle subscription and battery leasing uh, which is due, of course, to Zeker's products more accessible. Uh, so they want to make it more available to people maybe who don't necessarily need a vehicle all the time. I like that. Uh, definitely offering a vehicle subscription. That's kind of cool. That's an interesting feature that many people are talking about. A lot of EVs going in that direction, especially as we get into autonomy and, and potentially robo-taxis. I like that as a product. Sixt does this. Um, with their rental car fleet where you can actually do long-term rental or subscribing to the services, even though they don't have an EV fleet. But that's, that's the kind of thing I think that would really be a big and very popular thing within some of the dense inner urban cities because of the parking scenarios. So that's a good, good model there. I think Zeker is definitely one of these companies that could be a sleeper. Uh, oh, Zeker is a sleeper, there you go. That's the perfect headline right there. But uh, keep an eye out for them. I think this is gonna be one to watch. Uh, definitely, as you guys are checking out this, maybe you're over on the podcast, uh, give us a rating and let us know what you think. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure and like the video and subscribe for more great content. And if you have an idea for the show, you can send that over to our producers, just producer at revernetworks.com. And you can hit me up on Twitter, at Paul Barron. 
We got a whole slew of stuff coming at you from the Shanghai Auto Show. I can't wait to see what China is going to be doing because I think that has so much of an influence over the EV market and especially what's happening here in the United States because this is a early adoption market that is really primed for some big, big growth. So stay tuned right here on TechPath. We'll catch you next time. Make sure, don't forget to subscribe. See you soon.